praise the Lord. We're going to read Malachi chapter 2, 5 to 11. And this is about not profaning holiness nor the calling of God. My covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn away, did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But ye are departed out of the way, ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Having not all one Father, hath not one God created us. Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange god. So, again, reading verse number 5, and it says, My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. God has some beautiful things to say about Levi. That is the tribe of Levi, for they were those who were dedicated to doing the Lord's work. Since they were doing the Lord, Lord's work in Israel, God had his eyes upon them. But the sacrifices that all of Israel had been given to them to offer up to the Lord God. Thus, their jobs were very important, and it was impor so important for the relationship to be one of excellence with God also. Here it states that God's covenant was, was with him of life and peace. In other words, God used the tribe of Levi, whom God calls as one person together in unity, and that the covenant that God had made with the tribe of Levi was different from other tribes. For God's covenant, the special one that he had with the tribe of Levi for his work, was with Levi's descendants. Why did God choose Levi to have this particular covenant? Here it says, because of the fear wherewith he feared God and was afraid before God's name. Thus there was a special fear that Levi as a tribe had towards God. Where did it all start? Was it in Levi, the father of the tribe himself? Did Levi have that kind of fear towards God? And that is why he felt an urgency to exact revenge for Dinah, his sister. Was it because of Moses who came to know God in such a keen way? The Levites, no doubt, ha must have been proud that they were the ones who were dedicated to doing the work of the Lord and knowing that Moses had come from their tribe. Thus, they were chosen for the task of keeping up this covenant with God. And the covenant was not just with one person, but it was with the entire tribe. For God gave it, as it says, to them. They had feared God, which means that they had respected and revered God and was afraid before God. When people have a fear before God, that is when they will start obeying God. With no fear of God, they do not act accordingly, but they should, for God's word is true and will all come to pass. Verse number six says, The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was found not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn away many from iniquity. What was found 
in the Levite's mouth was the law of truth. That means that they had thought about it, and while contemplating it, they had begun to speak about the law of truth. Since it states that the law of truth was in his mouth, that means that they must have known about it, been taught it, and kept it amongst them, and taught it to their families. Meanwhile, doing all that, they must have been speaking about the law of God, for they had to share it amongst each other. And in sharing the law of truth amongst themselves, then they were able to find out much more about what God had wanted them to do. It also brought them to a certain place where iniquity was not found in the lips of the Levites. That, for those time periods, was amazing. For, one can imagine, without the Holy Spirit in them, the people might have, at times, allowed their words to get away from righteousness and speak vanities or even curse words. However, since the Levites were a tribe that was set up as an example to the others, they had kept their mouths clear of all such vanities or iniquity, as it states, the Lord commending them for good practice with their mouths. And since they were models of that truth, keeping their lips and mouth away from speaking ill of their neighbors, or cursing or swearing, they were able also to turn many away from that same iniquity, and from not only that which was with the mouth, but that which was also in their actions. Thus the Lord God gave this covenant unto Lev Levi, that is the tribe of Levi, due to their actions and their mouth, keeping it in line with the truth and leading others towards that direction the Lord. In fact, let's go ahead and read Numbers chapter 1, verses 49 and 50, where it says, Only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it, they shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it and shall come in camp round about the tabernacle. Amen. Let's also go ahead and read Numbers chapter 3 and verse number 12 and see what that says. Numbers chapter 3 and verse number 12. And it says, and I behold, have ta and I behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that opened the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites, it says, shall be mine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, and that is what the tribe of Levi was dedicated to doing. Praise God. So, with keeping in action of doing the things of God, taking care of the things of God, their mindset was in that kind of particular thing too. So that's why it could, we could say that there, with their mouths they had a good practice, for they were always talking about the Lord's things. Since they were models of that truth, keeping their lips and mouth away from speaking ill of their neighbors or cursing and swearing and such on, such, so on and so forth, they were able to, by that same token, turn many away from the same iniquity from not only that which was with their mouth, but also that which was in their actions. Thus the Lord gave this covenant unto Levi, that is the tribe of Levi, to do 
this due to their actions, their mouth, keeping it in line with the truth and leading others toward that direction. Praise the Lord. Verse number seven says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. These are the requirements laid out by the prophet as the word of the Lord who gave it to the priests in written form. Certainly they must have heard it by Malachi in his own speech too, but that is not stated. In any case, as it states here, his duty then is to keep knowledge. What does that mean? The priest should be able to come to an understanding of the law of God. That means that the priest should have sought out the will of God and the word of God and have come to a knowledge of what God's requirements are as concerning the sacrifice. What does it take for the messenger of the Lord to keep knowledge? The knowledge of the Lord should be obtained by those who have a calling, and the messenger of the Lord should always keep the knowledge of God, for it is like a treasure chest. Yet also, it is quite evident that it is not just what is written, per se, because it states here in verse 7, that the priest should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That said, the priest did not have an obligation, or did have an obligation, excuse me, to find out what God had stated as per his law. It was not just something in written form, but also one could state it was something that was spoken as to what the requirement was according to the covenant. To be a minister, it is to seek God. For God stated they, they should seek the law at his mouth. Thus, this is something that the ministers or workers of the Lord should be doing was to keep that particular knowledge. It was to make sure that God's workers had the knowledge of the Lord God of heaven. This message was directed to the ones who had a calling to be messengers of God. Thus, that was the covenant that God had made with the Levites, that they should seek the law at God's mouth, keep knowledge, retain the messages that God wanted them to speak to his people. It would be that way that they were being pleasing to God by having God answer their request to get the message of God. In verse number eight, however, it goes in a different direction. The first part begins to speak of what their responsibilities were and the reason why they got those responsibilities. But then, all of a sudden, it changes. God shows where they had changed. In verse number eight, it says, but ye, are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. So here, it seemed like they were on the road to doing what is good. They had actually influenced a lot of people and they had, you know, been found to do what is right. And they found, they did those kind of things and led many to God. But in verse number eight, it talks about how that they there was a change going on, and that change was a little bit by little bit, bit of it, a little bit by little bit, going away from God rather than going towards God. There's a difference, obviously, in which direction a person goes. If he's going towards God, that is great, even though at the beginning he was far from God, but he gets closer and closer, and he's in the will of God when he's getting closer and closer to God's will and to God's way. But here, uh, it seems like they're departed out of the way. Instead of going closer to God and his will, they're going out of the way, and they're leading others behind them out of the way of the, uh, of the word of God. And then, that goes to influence others to do the same, to stumble. And in that time period, they were following the law to stumble at the law. Here, though, God was showing them what their fault was. God was showing to them exactly where their fault had laid or line or lie. He wanted them to realize what they were doing wrong. God has not changed. He still will acknowledge what one does right 
and what was is doing wrong so that people can change and try to do better as he is speaking to the levites here jesus was speaking to the churches in asia in revelation he had commended the churches for doing things that he wanted them to do but he also wanted them to do more for him to get their reward for it is here that the rewards will one day be manifested in heaven and certainly no one who gets into the kingdom of heaven um, no one who gets into the kingdom of heaven obeys hallelujah um, it does not obey the, the, the will of God he must obey the will of God hallelujah and they will not people will not be disappointed for obeying the will of God Hallelujah. We will never be disappointed for obeying the will of God. Hallelujah. They will be overjoyed to get into heaven, to worship him forever, and seeing that we all ended up in heaven. It is a joy to be in the kingdom of God, to worship God, to love him, to find uh, and find him to speak to us. But here, here it says, they have departed out of the way. What does that mean? That means that they were not fulfilling their own God-given calling. How is it that some can seek their own, can seek their own God-given calling? The first thing that one uh, can do is begin by calling out to God, seeking his face for what one should do. Next is to express that calling with family members and to want to and to the ones who, to whom would promote that in one's calling. Of course, there are those who would promote the calling, but then there are those who would frown at one's calling due to one's own character, or they might just not think that one could have such a talent or get along with people and so on. However, the re reason why God is calling the person is because he is equipping the person or will equip the person. Mankind and God's ideas have a wide chasm between them. Therefore, what some may think would be the right person, that may just be according to the flesh rather than according to the spirit. It is much like when the prophet Samuel was looking at the sons of Jesse, that he had in mind that the first sons might have been the best. But that was all according to the flesh. God was not looking according to the flesh. The first sons were tall. They looked the part in a man's viewpoint. However, God looks at the heart, and this is the reason man's choices are out of whack. Man's choices are far from God's choices. Samuel, had he, had not, had he not been listening to God's voice, most assuredly would have chosen the wrong one. Samuel had gotten the wrong choice in mind, but God had told him exactly whom he had chosen. That was the right choice. Verse number nine says, therefore, have I also made you contemptible and base me before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Here are some of the other features of the things that were wrong with the Levites, though they had been chosen. Firstly, they had not been they had not kept the ways of God to keep the ways of God is a first and should always be a priority in our lives. When we pri prioritize his commands and his ways, then it follows that everything will turn out for the best because he will be in charge. To keep the ways of God is best not only for us, but it helps those to whom we are influencing. One of the things that God commended the Levites for was the fact that they had turned many away from iniquity and that they had served the Lord God with godly fear. Keeping up their faith and relationship with God would have affected many more people, but because they had turned from the relationship with God, then it follows that others were affected just the same. Due to the fact that the Levites were not keeping God's ways, then it followed that God himself had made the Levites contemptible and base before all the people. That means that they had become less of value to others, for they were probably ridiculing them for their, in other words, apostasy. If they had kept up their faith, 
and others would have respected them. Likewise, at least in Israel, it was just like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who had kept up their faith before God. Abraham so much the more. Then there was Moses who, because of his relationship with God, was made by God in the eyes of others respectable and respected. The Levites, though, were not keeping the ways of God, and they had also become partial. What does it mean to become partial? It means more, I believe, that they were favoring certain people over others, and it could have been due to their status as a rich person, and this kind of thing actually affected the poor. For the poor were looked at with, in their eyes, as I presume, ridicule, Thus, they were out of their own desire, directed to their in their conduct towards those to whom they could get prestige or gain, or those to whom they could get n nothing, maybe they ignored. Is, this, is it this kind of thing, I believe, that God hates? The Levites thus were showing this type of favoritism, looking at only those people to whom they could get something from, which must have been some kind of benefit that would be for them financially in some way. And the poor, those to whom even God had treated the same, but he would plead their cause for them, for not, uh, not being heard of in society. The priests and the Levites, it seems, would do just that, ignore them. And that caused them to get a really bad reputation for their practices. Verse 10 says, Have not have we not all one Father? Have hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Here begin, God begins to contend for what they should have been doing properly. They should not have been profaning the covenant which had been given to them, that is, according to God, dealing treacherously, for that is also against their brothers. For when they would obey the covenant given to them by God, they would then not deal treacherously against their brothers. What is it to be treacherous? It is to pray confidence in a person or to trust. It would be, be doing those things that were not pleasing to God. Thus, to profane the covenant of their fathers was to make sure that they had followed the one true God, obeyed him in his ways, and clung to them always, not showing favoritism to people for advantage. Verse number 11 says, Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem, for Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. Here the Lord God also speaks of another tribe, Judah. What abomination was the Lord God referring to here? God was speaking to the Israelites, to the Levites, and to the Jews, as well as to everyone in Israel, that the abomination that they had been practicing was in not being true to holiness. But they had profaned the holiness of the Lord. To profane is not to be concerned with those things that are religious, or those things that are what God had called us to do. Therefore, to profane one's calling is not to attend to one's calling or not value one's calling before God. Some may even profane another man's calling by doing all they can to ignore their calling, to disrupt their calling, to close all the doors that they possibly can in order to profane the calling of another. God is the one who called. The called should attend to the calling, but not profane one's own calling or the calling of another. For the calling is a heavenly calling, especially those who are in the truth, the doctrine of the apostles. How much more should we who have a calling of God reverence those who, to whom God has given a calling to? It may be because of jealousy that one profanes the calling of another. But in truth, God knows better than mankind knows the calling that he gives. Certainly God delights in his callings, for he is the one who that knows better than anyone else in the entire world. Thus, to pro profane the calling of another is to abuse it, to devalue it, to treat it as though it was contemptible and not worthy of high regard. 
For it is God who is called, and it is God who will judge. To profane the holiness of the Lord God also is to devalue holiness. It's just like the similar thing, to value the calling, to value holiness, not to appreciate it. As though it were not even necessary a part of religion anymore. Howbeit, holiness is God's desire for mankind, that mankind would be holy as God is holy. God wants us to be holy in every way we can, and every way that we should. He desires us to proceed and become holy, just like he is holy. Amen. That's why we call the Holy Spirit holy. Here, the prophet of God used the language that God had given to him to express this very severe and consequential terminology. This is treachery. It's abomination. God feels so. Not regarding the ways of God, not respecting the calling that one has, not adhering to holiness. For God loves these things. God wants all to be holy. And when God examines us, it would be better that he not find treachery in us or an abomination. Amen. Instead, it would be better for God to find what he's looking for. He's looking for holiness, those people that have, that are called, that are dedicated to their calling, to value the things of God and to value the calling of God in themselves, and the value of God in the calling of others. It is treachery and abomination to disregard the calling of God and the holiness of God, to ignore the mandates of God is, here it says treachery, to ignore his holiness is abomination. To God, that is what they should have steered clear of and to have repented of. Amen. So it was God using the prophet Malachi to explain to the Levites as the tribe to maintain their holiness, to maintain their calling, to dedicate themselves to the work of God. May God bless you today, and I thank God, hallelujah, for the calling of God. Paul, of course, he was one who was dedicated to God's work when there was not enough funds from a particular group of people. Of course, he he did uh, went ahead, go ahead and work for a period of time so that he could support himself. Amen. So one has to determine whether or not one has the uh, that particular uh, opportunity to work totally in the work of God or have to work secularly, secularly at some point. May God bless you today in Jesus' name.